to fulfill the lust thereof. And so in other words, now you need to be clothed with the garments of righteousness. You need to clothe yourself with the things of God and not make provisions for the desires and lust of the flesh. And so in other words, as a child of God, don't play with fire. If you play with fire, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get burned. And beloved, I know that first-hand experience. If you mess around with fire and matches, you're going to end up getting burned. And so as a child of God, don't put yourself in a bad situation. If you've got trouble with drinking, don't walk down the grocery store aisle that sells alcohol and beverages. Don't go to the bars. Don't put yourself in a place where you're going to give in and make provision for the flesh and end up falling into temptation and harming your testimony. Amen. And so, beloved, God wants us to listen. We're not talking about living a sinless life here. We're talking about living a blameless life. A blameless life. You can't be accused of this, that, and the other. Uh, we won't reach sinless perfection until we get into heaven. Amen? Amen. We still got that old corrupt nature. When you get saved, there's three things that didn't change after your salvation. The world didn't change, did it? You still live here on planet Earth. It's got a curse upon it. The devil didn't change. If anything, you made the devil more mad because you left his family and got joined into God's family. And so he's mad about that. He knows he can't take your soul to hell, but he'll do anything and everything he can to keep you from living for God and enjoying your Christian life. Yeah. And so the third thing you didn't change is what? Your flesh. Yeah. That old corrupt flesh that still wants to do the old fleshly carnal things. Sure. And you have these things warring against you on a daily basis. And so you certainly don't need to make provision for these things. We've got trouble enough as it is. Amen. Verse Peter chapter 1 verses 14 through 16 tells us, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And so we see here, according to the text, teaching us that denying the godliness of worldly lust we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse number 12 is addressing the people that desire to live for God, to live right. And beloved, now, today, in the age of apostasy that we're living in, more and more of the, of the theology that's getting out there, just live how you want to. Just do what you want to. God loves you. It's going to be okay. At the end of the day, all of us are going to go to heaven. That's a false doctrine right straight from the pits of hell. Now, let me tell you something. God will accept you just as you are. He'll save you just as you are. But you'll not stay just as you are once you get saved. And that's the part of the theology and doctrine that's being lost in our churches today. Uh, people look at uh, people desiring to live for the Lord. Oh, you're one of those holy roly bones. Have you ever been called that? I sure have been. You're one of them Bible thumpers. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not living to please you. I'm not trying to please you. I'm trying to please my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if my holy way of living or trying to live a holy way bothers you, then just don't come around me Amen. and everything. I'm not trying to suit you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to serve the Lord and live a life that's right and well-pleasing to Him. But you know something? Your holy living and your desire to live for God will bring about conviction on those that are not. And that's why they'll pick you out of a crowd and they'll persecute you because of your stance and your life for Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 7 tells us, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. First Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, again, being aware of our circumstances around us. Be sober, be vigilant, because you're ever saved the devil. As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking him he may devour. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 7 tells us, But the end of all things is at hand. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, Preacher, does the world come to the end? I said, well, I said, it sure looks that way, does it not? Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. I don't know when Jesus Christ is coming again, but he is coming again. Amen? Amen. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 7 tells us, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. 
and watch unto prayer. So, preacher, what are you going to do? I'm just watching for the and waiting for the return of the Lord. And in the meantime, I'm going to labor. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to witness until He calls me home or comes back and gets me. Whichever comes first. I can't change what's going to take place. I can't change what's happening now. But bless God, I can labor, I can live for the Lord, I can serve Him, and I can watch, and I can look for His return. And so, verse number 13, Titus chapter 2, verse number 13, and looking people, and let me tell you something, don't tell me he's a preacher, uh, ain't nobody likes to look around, uh, that, that's being nosy. <laughs> what neighborhood do you live in? <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to come move into that neighborhood. I don't care where you at. I don't care what you do. I don't care where you go. I don't care where you live at. Somebody somewhere is watching you. Amen. And beloved, uh, listen, that was true back 60, 70 years ago before security cameras were uh, abundantly available, before cell phones were available. I was, uh, uh, the other day I was waiting for Christy to come home for lunch, and so uh, I flipped uh, the channel over. I was getting ready for the news to come on. Christy's getting ready to come home for lunch. And so I uh, had a few minutes to kill, so I hopped over on Facebook, and, and, and it always shows me there's these reels to watch. There's these reels to watch. And uh, I tapped on one. It was a football game. Uh, it was Los, An Los Angeles Rams or wherever they're at now. It was a Rams football game. And these two guys got into it, and, and, and the next thing I know, man, they're slugging it out. I mean, it looked like UFC Live. And this was right there in the stands of the Rams football game. And then three or four other people got into it, and it turned into a battle royale. And the people that weren't fighting, guess what they were doing? They had their phone up with it. Well, yeah, they were cheering them on, some of them were. But they had their phones out recording it. And I'm like, wow. You know, if I was there, I saw one woman had enough sense to get up and leave and get out of, get out of town. That's what I would have done. But now when I got up in the balcony, if I had my phone, I'd sit there and record it from on high. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, we're always looking, are we not? But why is it the child of God lives day in and day out and really doesn't think about looking for the Lord to return that day? And notice here, verse number 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Are you looking for Jesus Christ to come again? I certainly hope that you are. And beloved, if you know, if you know somebody was going to come rob your house, if you know somebody was going to come in and try to do harm for your, to your family, I believe you'd be at the window. I believe you'd be at the door looking and watching for them. Especially if they give you forewarning. You know, the Bible says if the good man of his house would have known his house would have been robbed, he would have been what? Waiting for him. Now, beloved, we know the next prophetic thing to take place in God's calendar is the rapture of the church. Then why is the church so lackadaisical, if you will, and lackluster in looking for the return of Jesus Christ? Now, beloved, he can come this morning. But I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is, is if you know somebody's going to try to do something to you, or if you know somebody's going to do harm to you, you're going to be sober, you're going to be vigilant, and you're going to be looking. You're going to be looking. And beloved, Jesus Christ is coming again. Yeah. And beloved, if you know somebody, if you know somebody's going to be coming back and you're looking for them, that's going to give some priority in your life and that's going to change what you do and how you act. Right. And so beloved, if we truly believe that Jesus Christ is coming again, yeah. should it not influence how we live, how we walk, how we talk as a child of God? Because he could have been up here at any moment. Now think about this. You're sitting there at your computer and you know Jesus Christ is coming again. That might affect what websites you go to and what you click on. Bless him, Lord. If you're truly born again, that keep you from looking at something. And you believe Jesus Christ is coming again, that might keep you from picking up certain magazines or keep you off certain pages on your phone. And so, beloved, a looking people, we're a looking people. We're not trying to get in everybody's business. That's not what it's referring to. It's talking about looking for the return of Jesus Christ in verse 13. Amen. And Revelation chapter 22, verse number 12 tells us, is Jesus speaking, he said, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. 
As children of God, we'll stand before the Lord in judgment at the Bema seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. He's going to prepare a place for us. Tammy sang that song, A Mansion Over the Hilltop. Yeah, John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare, go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. You better be looking because he is returning. I will come again and receive you into myself that where I am, there you may be also. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. When the rapture takes place, he's not coming all the way back to earth physically. We're going to meet him in the air. To meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Let me tell you something. If you're scared of heights, and you're scared of speed, let me tell you something. Be thankful you'll get a new glorified body when the rapture takes place. Because in the moment, and in the twinkling of an eye, now, I get fast. I, I, I get a little nauseous. If I go too fast down Davis over here, going toward Cumberland down this hill, if I get up about 45, 50 mile an hour, I'll tell you what, I get a little nauseous by the time I get the light because i got to catch my stomach and get caught back up with it. And uh, I was talking about, uh, uh, talking about uh, our, our other home. Uh, we're still working out some business plans on, on the other home that the Lord's given us, uh, the one that we moved from and everything. And... Uh, it's talking, uh, it's talking to an individual and it's telling them what kind of windows were in there. And I said, uh, I said they're, they, they're removable, you can clean them. I said, growing up as a child, I said, we were so poor. I said, it wasn't until the, the mid-80s or late-80s before, before my dad would, was able to uh, have enough money to go buy a ladder. And I said, uh, I said uh, uh, the home that we're in now used to have the same style of uh, storm windows in, in them. And I said, uh, I said, so I said, you're looking at who had to clean those windows. And I said, I said, I'll tell you, I said, before we got a ladder, I said, they hung me out the window. My mom and my sister uh, hung me out the window. They put me up there on the headboard of the bed, and they hang on my feet and said, get them windows clean. And I said, I, I said, I was out there cleaning them one summer. I said, I never will forget it. I said, my mom had a hold of one leg. My sister had a hold of the other. I said, my sister started laughing. And I said, I didn't think this was funny at all. She said, I wonder what he'd do, Mom, if we let go of him. If he would fall or not. And I remember my sister, just like she is right now, laughing with the exact same smile on her face. I looked down, I saw the concrete slab down there at the bottom. Scared me to death. I turned around and started beating on the windows. Let me in. Let me in. And they let go of my legs just for a split second. And then they grabbed them back. They wouldn't want to let me fall. But they sure let me think about it. Uh, but you know what? In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that's how quick it's going to take place. You look at me right now, if you look at me, do you see me blink? That's the twinkling of an eye. That's how quick it's going to take place. Amen. And so, beloved, if going fast or heights bother you, <laughs> another reason to rejoice in that new glorified body, amen? amen. Uh, this body of corruption will be changed into a body of incorruption, amen? And so, a looking people, amen? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, looking for and hasting into the coming of the day of God, Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent, sober, be diligent, that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. See how these things go hand in hand? Be found of him in peace. Without spot, blameless. The people living right, looking for the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And notice now, verse number 15. And until that takes place, we should be a laboring people, yeah. working for the Lord. These, uh, or verse 14. Who gave himself for us, he did it all, amen, that he might redeem, buy back us from all iniquity, and purify to himself a peculiar people, purifying. A godly people. We have the righteousness of Christ now that's been imputed to our account. Purifying to himself a peculiar people. A people set aside 
a people with purpose, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now listen, our good works don't save us, and our good works don't uh, listen. Our good works don't save us, and our good works don't keep us saved. But bless God, our good works reveal to others the work that He's done in our lives. Our good works is a result of salvation. Is a result of salvation. You know, the Bible tells us if we fast forward to Titus chapter 3, verse number 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God, those that are saved, those that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Why? Keep you saved? No. Uh, keep, uh, uh, allow you to be saved? No. Why? These things are good and profitable unto men. When you show good works to other people and you do good works to others, that allows them to see Christ in you and what God has done for you that they'll want to know more about Jesus, that they'll want to get saved because they can see Christ in you. That's profitable unto others. They receive the good work and they see Christ in you. And so... Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. We all know Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, that that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse number 10. For we are his workmanship. In other words, he's the, uh, he's the potter, and we are the clay. And he's shaping us and conforming us into the image of, of his son, and he's working in us, and he works through us. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In other words, we ought to be out laboring and working for the Lord to glorify his name for the good of others and bring forth what? Fruit. Bring forth fruit. John chapter 15 verse number 5 tells us, 